So there are lots of us who really want to know, like, what exactly can a PA do? I mean, I know you're called a physician assistant, so what exactly is it that you do? And so that is the question that we're gonna be answering in this video. What's up, you guys? It's Adana, welcome back to my channel. So um, if you're new to my channel, take a look around. If you like what you see, go ahead and subscribe. Please hit that like button and that notification bell because it really helps my YouTube algorithm out a lot. But I had a question posed by Kayvon Cannon, and he asked, can you talk about trauma PA's scope of practice in depth? Do you intubate? Are you supervised when doing so? Are you trained in bedside ultrasound? Do you place subclavian and arterial lines? How often is the attending physician or surgeon in the trauma bay with you? Do you manage unstable hip fractures, etc.? Do you transfer or give report to the admitting provider at another higher acuity facility? Thanks, Adana. We appreciate your content. Okay, so that is a lot of questions to unpack in this one video. So I'm gonna do my best to do, like answer all of your questions. I'll read through it again. Um, but uh, what do we do uh, as trauma PAs? Because if you don't know, I am a trauma PA and so more so an acute care surgery PA. So I deal with trauma, general surgery, vascular and thoracic surgery. So we cover a lot. Um, as far as intubations, no. We don't do the intubations. The anesthesiologists or the like nurse anesthetists, they're the ones that are actually doing the intubations. We're, although we're trained to do that in PA school, like we learn intubations and lumbar punctures and all of those various different things like central lines, um, we don't do those, at least at my facility. Maybe at another facility, uh, they allow their PAs to you know, go ahead and do the intubations. Um, but for me, we don't do that because we have the anesthesiologists that come and perform that task for us. So that is, to answer that question, no. So first question checked, right? Um, you asked, am I supervised when I do so? Well, since I don't do them, no, I'm not supervised because we don't do those. It says, are we trained in bedside ultrasound? So yes, we are. Um, we're training bedside ultrasound at um, in school and more so in the field. And it all depends on what specialty you're in. But as a trauma PA, we need to learn how to do a fast exam. Uh, because when our patients are coming in, we're trying to do like a really quick assessment of what is going on with them. So we have to do this like focus ultrasound assessment of the patient. And so we do lots and lots of fast exams when dealing with our trauma patients that are initially coming in. And so that is something that we're trained in. And then we also use ultrasounds to put in lines. So that is your next question you asked, um, do we place subclavian and arterial lines? So we do lines all the time. Um, now, obviously our ICU colleagues, our ICU PAs, they do lines like all day, every day. Like that is like their bread and butter in the ICU. But in a very like acute, high acuity, like trauma, very emergent situation um, not only do we put in chest tubes but we place um, various different arterial lines so we may need to put uh, literally an a line in uh, so that we can see what the patient is doing we may have to put central lines in so central venous catheters and we'll do those typically in the fem like the femoral artery but when it comes to if our patient is a little bit more stable, we might put one in the subclavian. Um, and it's we don't care too much about like the dropping a lung because we can easily put a chest tube in. But you know, if you don't need to, um, we don't necessarily go in the subclavian because although the femoral artery in the femoral area is a little bit more dirty because it's right by the groin, there is less vasculature there and less like various different organs and things that we are really concerned about. When you're going in the subclavian or the jugular, you're um, subclavian, you're really worried about the lung and collapsing that lung. So we do place those lines and we do those pretty often uh, on our job. It says, how often is the attending physician or surgeon in the trauma bay with you? So my attending is, it depends on which attending is there, I guess you could say. Um, so for the most part, they'll come down here and there, right? You know, sometimes they're there, you know, right when the trauma is called, we all get there at the same time. Uh, we're the ones kind of running the primary assessment while they're in the back kind of, you know, conducting the show. Um, 
making sure that everybody is doing their particular role. But not always, it's not always the case. Sometimes they're in the OR and a trauma comes in and they're not there at all, but they'll come back once they're done with the OR to just be like, you know, hey, what happened? Is everything okay? Is the patient fine? Well, you know, that kind of stuff. Just because at the end of the day, you know, they're gonna be under their service. And so they wanna know like who the patient is and get an assessment of that patient. Um, sometimes it's a matter of like a call and they will see the patient on their own, you know, when they have time. So I may go in for a consult, see the patient, do my assessment, tell my attending what's going on. They will give me some insight on things that I can do, you know, maybe um, some various different labs that I should order or put this patient on, like antibiotics if I haven't already done so. Uh, just a little bit of cleanup work if there was something that I may have missed, which again, you know, I'm new, like it's almost been a year, but I'm, I still consider myself new, so I don't know everything. But I will call them, let them know, and at the end of the day, they have enough faith in you as the PA to be like, okay, I trust your judgment. Um, and so that's cool, we'll roll with that. But then they'll see the patient like on their own when they're they're ready to do their own rounds. So it all depends on, on who the attending is and who the PA is and the type of relationship that you guys have and the trust that you have. But they're not always in the trauma bay with us running the traumas. Sometimes they're off in the operating room doing things and we have to do that on our own. And so I, like, I don't know if this is necessarily the case for all trauma PAs. I don't know how other hospitals work, but for my hospital, I, you know, I think that we have a really good re working relationship with our attendings and they really do trust us a lot and give us a lot of leeway when it comes to like actually being practitioners, you know, licensed practitioners that can kind of do this job. And so I really appreciate that. And I can't take that for granted because again, I don't know what it is like at other places. All right, so your next question said, do you manage unstable hip fractures? So, I mean, technically, but not really. So, like, yes, like if uh, uh, somebody comes in and they fracture their hip, you know, we do this full body scan, we call it a shan scan. And so it's, you know, depending on where the injury is, we might do like a maxillofacial CT. We definitely do chest, abdomen, and pelvis. And then again, if you have like any extremities that the orthopedic team may need um, just to check out like the vasculature, to see if it's been compromised or not, we will include those as well. So if there is a hip fracture that come, you know, somebody comes in, they have like a pelvis fracture and they're bleeding out or something, we put a pelvic binder in, um, we're making sure that we're pushing blood, all of that kind of stuff. And then our attendings will, you know, we're like, okay, we gotta go to the OR. And so you'll go to the OR to kind of try and stop the bleeding, but you also call the ortho team on board to help with that in terms of stabilizing uh, the bone that's broken, the hip that's broken, or maybe it's a femur. And so do we manage that? to a certain degree, but for the most part, since it's the bone, you know, we usually call the orthopedic surgeon, but more so the orthopedic PA that's on, and they will come, they will assess the patient, and they'll talk to their attending, and then we'll coordinate that way. So that's typically how it works at my hospital, and I think that's how it works at most places, you will initially assess the patient, you will manage what you can for the patient, and then you kind of outsource to the various different specialty teams because this is their specialty and they know exactly what they're doing, okay? All right, um, you asked, do you transfer or give report to the admitting provider at another higher acuity facility? So like I can tell, came on that you are like for sure in the medical field or you're like in BA school or something like that because you know like the realm of how things work. You know the operations of exactly how things work. So do we transfer? Yeah, there are times when we do transfer. And it's not always because of, you know, there it's like more high acuity per se. There may there are just some things that we don't have at our hospital. So, you know, there are like optimal like ophthalmology, right? If there's something going on with the patient's eye, we do have ophthalmologists that are on our team um, at the hospital, but some of them don't do particular surgeries or, um, you know, we may not have the necessary equipment at our hospital. And so we do transfer to our sister hospital um, that's further north. Uh, and that 
tends to happen from time to time, but typically for the most part, we try not to transfer. Um, really, lots of uh, people in other hospitals are kind of transferring to us. So that's what we get a lot of. We'll get calls saying, hey, you know, we have a pending transfer for an SBO, or we have a pending transfer for an appy or a pending transfer for an MVC, or they will drive people from like 45 minutes away if they can't fly them to our hospital because our hospital is the high acuity hospital. And But then we do have a sister hospital that deals with things that where we may fall a little short in terms of, oh, we don't have that equipment or um, our particular surgeon doesn't perform that particular surgery so that's really how it goes but i mean we're pretty we're a pretty decent hospital and I, and i like that aspect of it because i get to see a lot and I get to learn a lot and as a new grad that is like the number one thing that you can ask for more learning because when you're in school you're learning like the book work you're learning how it says to do it in the book but practical stuff hands-on seeing like some of these surgeons that have been practicing for decades and then you see how they're doing it as opposed to how the book said and you're like wow i didn't realize that that was even an option and you see them how they are just masters of their their craft and their trade that is amazing and so um still learning a lot really really excited um i'm I'm happy that I'm in the field that I'm in right now. Um, obviously, trying to learn as much as I can. Still studying. Right now, I'm studying for my ATLS. So, studying for that. So, we'll see how that goes. I'll let you guys know. But you're constantly learning. Like, this is lifelong learning. Um, so, if you don't want to be a lifelong learner, then being a PA is not necessarily for you. But if you do, then go ahead and subscribe to this channel again because it helps my YouTube algorithm a lot. And go ahead and continue to get you know, the knowledge, like through Google and YouTube and books and school, um, because it's only going to be a benefit to you in the future. All right. So hopefully you guys like this video. Thanks, Kate Mom, for asking me that question. Please, you guys continue to leave me your comments and your questions in the comment section below. Go ahead and like this video, subscribe to my channel, follow me on Instagram at PA and on Instagram at Get That's the University, where we help you get into and through PA school. And thank you guys so much for watching. I will talk to you guys next time.